So the next one uh, that we're going to look at is going to be presented by Colm. And Colm, uh, you, you're not, um, don't know who Colm is. Um, he's a heritage consultant. So um, he now has his own business, independent planning, energy and heritage consultant. He has degrees in architecture, conservation, planning, public administration, et cetera, et cetera. And he spent many years in the Heritage Council. So Colm, I'm going to let you um, work away as I... Yeah, so uh, this is a course that we're running uh, through TUS um, based on work that was done um, over the last few years to plug a gap in the knowledge about how traditional buildings can be energy renovated to ensure that they too uh, perform as part of our um, climate ready world. And this diagram, in a sense, um, captures that difference. It, uh, you could say that the modern regulatory environment is designed for uh, the building on the left of your screen there, which is non-vapor permeable and generally reasonably highly insulated and built with cavity walls and so on. Whereas um, we know that up to 16 to 20% of our building stock, um, which contains a whole load of carbon in itself, um, performs differently and will require different strategies to ensure uh, that they to reduce the amount of heat that they use in the future, the amount of, amount of energy that they use in the future. So the whole course is designed around um, ensuring that we get uh, to a point where our old buildings are reusable and that they're not using a huge amount of energy. And um, this, uh, like the previous course, uh, is uh, will require a minimum level seven um, as an entry level and um, a reasonably mature student um, there will be uh, provision for recognizing prior learning as well. So um, we can make sure that those who are passionately interested in this subject will be able to access the course. Uh, like the previous course, it's run over 24 weeks in two modules. Um, and uh, th it'll be uh, Wednesday evening lecturers and as lectures and as much as possible to get practical experience and hands on site visits and so on. We'll be making that happen. Okay, next there, Liz. So um, we think this is incredibly important as um, a form of education or learning um, to avoid damage to historic buildings in the first place, but not just to avoid damage, but to ensure that um, these old buildings can take their place in a uh, low energy future. Um, we want to help the people who specify building works, that is generally architect engineers and um, building surveyors, but how to specify energy reduction works for these buildings. And in doing that, um, to comply with high standards of um, professional practice, to find pathways to compliance with building regulations, to make sure that energy works can be shown to comply with the building regulations. So the course um, also uh, introduces people to the science and uh, techniques of energy renovation work specification and the tools and methods that can be used um, to demonstrate that the works comply with the building regulations and to analyze and ensure that those works are going to do what we hope they will do. Uh, in a sense, these older buildings have historical values and environmental resource values. They are standing structures that enclose space, that are serviceable into the future, that have proven their worth, that embody a whole lot of carbon, and that should be part of our future for cultural as well as for environmental reasons. Um, Liz has touched in the last course there on life cycle assessment. We won't be doing an awful lot of that in this course, but it is important to, to note that um, energy renovating older buildings is part of a minimum carbon um, strategy for the future. Next slide there, Liz. So th the content of the course will look at um, the national legislative contexts, um, the responsibilities that specifiers have to comply with those, and the opportunities that are involved in uh, adaptively re reusing older buildings, uh, and the funding opportunities that are available to help support such strategies. Um, we're finding that many clients 
want their buildings to be green buildings in the future and want them to be the same old buildings that they have been living in and that they love. So there are opportunities for adaptive reuse of buildings in uh, this learning. Um, we begin by thinking about traditional buildings and the architectural heritage and the types of values and characteristics that they have, including their environmental performance. And that um, circles around good descriptions of the condition of buildings. Now that comes up even more forcefully in the second module, but we touch on it in the first module as well. How do we describe the condition of a building in a way that is useful um, analytically to um, uh, ensuring that we specify the right works. We we'll have to look at building physics, how energy, heat flows through the fabric of a building. And we introduce the triangle of moisture balance. Um, we'll have a slide about that in a moment or two now. The crucial document that we're introducing, uh, and in the sense that this course is built around, is um, what's known technically as the uh, Irish standard or European norm 16883, which is, oh, it's got a long title, um, where have I got it here? Um, uh, conservation of the architect, oh, thank you, Liz. Conservation of the cultural heritage, guidelines for improving the energy performance of historic buildings. And the key diagram in that um, guidance is there on the left-hand side of your screen now, which talks about generating choices of specifications and then selecting from a long list of measures for the historically and thermally appropriate short list of measures or package of measures um, that are then implemented. And that process of thinking is essentially the core of this course so that we have a, a wide knowledge of all the things you could do and a context in which a conceptual framework in which to make selections and um, get the right thing um, on the um, into the tender documents that won't destroy the architectural heritage. Um, we'll be doing that based on the experience of architects and engineers um, carrying out this form of work uh, already um, by looking at the work and site visits. We also look at the very important um, issue of communicating these concepts with clients and regulators uh, and um, with uh, builders uh, as well, so that we can ensure that um, a, there is a clear understanding of the intentions behind these projects and that they don't get tripped up by misunderstandings or those regulatory barriers that may be there. Um, we want to ensure that these retrofitting projects don't participate in what is called the carbon spike, that the um, overdrive to ensure that we do reduce carbon doesn't in itself cause a carbon spike in the atmosphere. So we look at the ecological value of the materials and products um, that are uh, potentially usable to specify their uh, environmental performance um, descriptions and um, that we're genu genuinely using strategies that will reduce carbon and that don't cause cost too much carbon in the short term. And again, referring back to the first quote that Liz introduced to us this afternoon, knowing what can go wrong on site is incredibly important uh, too, that this has to be a practical art, an art that hits the ground and doesn't, again, trip up in doing so. And, and finally, we'll be looking at um, the funding opportunities that are available to support this form of work. Um, we've looked at this slide briefly. Um, and yes, now the, uh, the central, Sorry. Um, how would you say, the, the essence of the knowledge uh, and art and skill of uh, specifying building works for traditional buildings uh, is to keep these three factors in balance, that we need freshness and lack of pollutants in the air that we breathe. It also needs to be warm and it also needs to, we need to be aware of how much water vapour it uh, contains. And the physics of those three interacting elements are what makes uh, a good building uh, in these terms. And the answer to what makes a, a good interior in a traditional building will be different to the one for a modern building where we have far more control over all the parameters from the outset. So that's the art and skill of, of this course. Um, the second um, module will um, look in great detail at how we detect uh, defects and how we analyze 
condition and fabric of existing buildings as a starting point um, and taking up the theme that DASB has of um, digital engagement it will be looking at the tools that are available um, to, to do so, beginning with the standards and the softwares that are available to calculate new values and WOFI and so on, but also how uh, digital recording uh, and uh, building renovation passports and so on can be part of the way that we take care of our buildings and manage them responsibly. Next slide. So, um, the, the things that is an issue with older buildings, especially if they've been disused, is they may actually be unhealthy. Um, now, you, you don't get killed by uh, dry rot, the horrible picture on the right hand side there, but it does do an awful lot of damage to your building. We need to know about the moisture content of timbers and plasters um, and the structural stability of floors, uh, the presence or absence of um, chemicals such as asbestos and lead that may be hazardous as well as tunes uh, and what they leave behind and uh, the microscopic score, sc spores that can get into our lungs. So we take each building, we, we assume as a starting point that each building is unique and that its history of repair or neglect uh, makes it distinctive and that that is what uh, is our starting point in our reality for, for taking care of it into the future, taking care of it as a carbon resource as much as any other. So um, next slide then, we'll be looking at um, what virtual reality tools, and this is um, Finola DV, uh, an architect working out of uh, Athlone, um, will be introducing to course participants um, how to explore a building and report correctly on its condition uh, in a useful way using tools such as virtual reality, among others. Um, PowerPoint and um, Excel spreadsheets and so on are also so valuable in doing this. Um, we've run this course previously last winter um, and we've had some very positive feedback from our students looking at um, Limerick the last time, Limerick City and the experience of doing some renovations there. Um, some people responded very warmly to that. Um, Others asked for technical information, and um, yes, we'd love to do that. We will be trying very hard next time around to give more hard science and specification back up um, to our students. I was most struck by one particular um, testimonial, which was that um, a building control officer who participated in the course said that in the future she would um, have a greater and deeper understanding of the role of historic buildings and the latitudes that they deserve and require um, to take part in our society in the future. And um, I was quite satisfied with that. So I think that's it. Have we one more slide there, Liz? 